So we've been looking at a lot of random walks lately, um, and we've mostly been representing them either in an animation like this, where we see the random walkers taking steps. Here we've got them taking steps in the Y direction. Or we've been representing their random walk on a graph representing their position along the Y axis and the step that we're on along the X axis. And we've gotten these neat patterns. We've even had um, hundreds and thousands of random walkers on the screen making this neat lattice pattern. But this is not the only way that you can represent a random walk. Or another way to say that is that this is not the only uh, final product that you can create using a random walk code. Remember, the heart of the random walk is this subroutine here that selects a random direction up or down. We're just turning that into um, a, a vertical step on an animation, but you could do anything you wanted with that that goes in a direction. And that, of course, includes music. So what I've got over here is a is a different random walk code. It looks rather different because it's, it's giving a different output, but it has the same type of, um, it has the same idea behind it that we're either increasing or decreasing something. And the thing we're going to be looking at in this case, let me switch this to the value I need to start with. Um, the thing that we're gonna be uh, switching this case is the value of a note. So for example, here we've got our random walk routine. We're calling it next note. So instead of taking a, a physical step, we're going to be taking a musical step. And we'll do a one-dimensional random walk at first, where the dimension we're going to be changing is the pitch of the note. And so what I've got here is a 50-50 chance of either increasing the, pit, the, the note's pitch by one or decreasing the note's pitch by one. So we're gonna be going up and down a C major scale um, or A minor, depending on uh, how you listen to it. Um, we start on a C, so that kind of defaults your ear to C major. Um, so we'll be going up a note or down a note. Um, in order to do this, I've had to create a new class in Python called the note. Um, if we scroll up here, I'll show you what that class looks like. So a musical note, um, has at, at a very basic level has two properties, its pitch and its duration. So this is how high or low the note is, and this is how long the note lasts. So the pitch is A, B, C, D, etc. The duration is half note, quarter note, eighth note, etc. Um, so we initialize these things with the pitch and the duration. Now you notice I've got underscore num on there so we can keep track of them numerically because that makes the numbers easier to manipulate. But we need to also be able to determine what note that actually is. We need to be able to translate pitch underscore num into the actual pitch. And that's what this uh, function here is for. So we can use note.pitch instead of note.pitch num to get the note um, as it's traditionally represented. Um, so basically, if it's a one, that corresponds to a C4. If it's a two, it corresponds to a D4. A three corresponds to E4. And we've got two octaves encoded here. We go all the way up to 15 um, to get up to C6. Um, you notice we've also got the modulus function here. So we're gonna wrap this thing back around on itself um, after it goes up two octaves. Um, so that we don't uh, end up getting notes that are way too high or way too low. We're going to stay within um, the, the, the normal range of the treble clef, basically. Um, then down here we've got a similar function to convert the duration num into an actual duration. So here we're going to be converting these into half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. Now you've probably noticed by now I've got this four mu score um, logical variable here. I'm going to turn that off for right now. Uh, we're going to talk about what that does in just a second. First, I want to just demonstrate for you what the code does. So here we've got our, our usual um, setup for the random walk. Um, we've got our, we're going to keep track of our, uh, we're going to keep track of the note we're at now, and that's going to be overwritten by the next note. Um, so next note is that function that determines uh, whether we need to go up or down. Um, and here we are going to print out the results for it. So uh, we're not going to use MuseScore just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to print the current notes' duration and pitch. So when I hit Control-2, I'm going to get a text output to describe what this piece of music is going to do. So we've got 100 notes here. 
Actually, we've got a little bit more than 100. We'll talk about that in a second. We start off with a quarter note on C5, and basically we move up or down in pitch. So we're going to keep it consistent in quarter notes for now. This is just a one-dimensional random walk. In a second, we'll turn it into a 2D random walk. But basically, we're going up and down the scale. Um, let's see, do we wrap around any... Um, I don't... Oh yeah, we wrap around here. We get two... So for example, we get too high here. We get up to C6. And so it received a signal to go up. Well, we don't want it to go up past C6. That's getting a little too high for comfort. So we jump down two octaves to C4, and then it tried to go down. Well, that's too low for comfort. So it go, jumps back up two octaves to C6. So that's going to be um, a little bit of jumping around. But, you know, music does, does interesting things like that. And what you notice is if you count these, and I'm not expecting you to count them now, we've got a little bit more than 100 because you have to end on a C. You have to end on the tonic note. And so the way I've encoded that is in the while loop, we're going to go for at least 100 steps. And then after that's been met, we're going to continue to go until we reach another C. So basically we're looking to reach uh, C and then after 100 notes, and then we know we can finish. Now that's pretty cool. Um, of course, if you hand this to a musician, they they might be able to play this. Like, like it won't be the most pleasant experience. I'm, I'm sure they could. I mean... I, I could probably pick this out on a piano, but it's not going to be all that great. This is not the way we usually encode music. Um, now, I have not yet figured out a way to get this directly encoded into sheet music, but I have figured out a little bit of a workaround. So let me share with you my workaround. We'll have a little bit of a, of a combined tutorial here. Um, what The way I've set this up is I've added in all these extra little conditions that say for MuseScore. So if you turn this on, what it's going to do is give you all these little key commands like C right, D right. Um, when you need to shift octave, uh, it's going to give you, uh, where is it down here? It's going to give you this combination to get to change the octave. Um, let me show you what this output looks like. Set control to again. So it's going to give us a different random piece of music. So every time you run this, you're going to get a different piece of music. By the way, this is what I use to create the music for this video. So the music you are hearing now um, is music from, uh, from this code, randomly generated. So what we have here are the key commands that it would take to enter this into a program called MuseScore. Um, and you notice here we've got our, uh, we need to shift an octave. So we are shifting here, here we're shifting another octave. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all this, Control A, Control Copy. And we're going to place this into a script for a program called Hotkeys. Uh, this is a, a quick way, a pretty simple way of creating macros for your computer. You know, so keystrokes that you don't want to have to type over and over again. So it can be shortcuts or it can be lots and lots of keystrokes like we've got here. Let me make sure everything pasted in. All right. Cool. So the top little piece here, um, I'll leave a link to the documentation for hotkeys so you can get an idea of how to use it. But basically, um, this piece means that this is next bit of, of keystrokes is going to be assigned to control zero. So that is a hotkey not used by default in MuseScore. So that's the hotkey I've assigned to it now. And then basically all of these lines say send this set of key commands. So send 5, E, right, 5, F, right, etc. So the 5 indicates that it's going to be a quarter note, because that's the shortcut key in MuseScore for a quarter note. Then this gives you the note, and then this gives you the move on to the next note. So this is going to move it on to the next note, and then return means you're done with the, with the uh, macro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this script, and we compile this script over here. So now once I'm in MuseScore, all I do is hit Control-0. And there we go. Did you hear that? Wasn't that lovely? So this is the musical composition that our random walk code generated. It is 100-something notes, 100 plus however many it took to get back to C here. So I'll play it for you now in a little bit better tempo. Now, of course, this is a one-dimensional random walk in that there's only one variable randomly changing, right? We're going randomly up or down, but the only thing that's changing is the pitch. If I wanted to make this a two-dimensional random walk, 
I have to find another variable to change. And the, the logical other variable to change is the duration of these notes. So what we're gonna do next is turn this into a two-dimensional random walk where the first dimension is the pitch and the second dimension is the duration of the note. So we'll have either the pitch changing or the duration changing. All right, there we go. We ended on the tonic, that's good. Um, so let's go back over to our code here. We're gonna scroll up here. We're gonna turn this number dimensions into two. And now what's gonna happen when we use this next note routine, so for n dimensions equal to two, we've got a 50% chance of changing the pitch like we did before, or we've got a 50% chance of changing the duration. Now, I'm only gonna stick to four types of notes. Um, we're gonna stick with um, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, and 16th notes. Anything longer than a half note is gonna be kind of boring. Anything shorter than a 16th is gonna be kind of frantic. So let's, again, get the same, about the same number of notes as we had before, control two. And so you see here, we get the same kind of output. The only difference is you're either going to change the pitch, the note, or you're going to change the, uh, the duration, the type of note that it is. So here we're changing the duration while keeping the pitch constant. Here we're changing the pitch while keeping the duration constant. And then of course we're adjusting for our octaves over here when we need to. So let's take this and I'm gonna copy and paste this into my hotkey and then uh, we'll paste it into MuseScore. So here I am back in MuseScore, let's hit control zero. So you notice here, you've got places where you are stuck on the same type of note, the same pitch, but changing the duration. Here you've got the same duration, but you're changing the pitch. Let's give a listen to this thing, see how it turned out. Another thing to note is that this code doesn't care where you are in terms of a measure. So for example, this is supposed to be a quarter note, but it starts on the uh of four, and so it has to go through until the and of one of the next measure. And so this quarter note starts on the uh of two and everything else is delayed a little bit. Um, so this is not exactly something I would want to play, but that's why I'm glad the computer plays it for me. That was kind of cool. Octave jump there. Cool, so this is what our random walk code has created. Um, I'm gonna post an MP3 of this and the other one uh, in the description below, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Feel free to uh, make use of this. If you figure out a better way to get these notes into a musical editor than hacking together a bunch of stuff, uh, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will see you next time when we'll do something a little more festive. Bye-bye.